As time goes on, you're going to start storing a lot of files on your Synology NAS, many of which will be important. For this reason, you need to ensure that you're backing up your NAS, and this will be a total guide on using Hyper Backup. In the description, I have written instructions as well if you're interested in using those. Now, Hyper Backup is a relatively simple application in what it does, but it's very powerful. And in summary, it just allows you to back up files on your Synology NAS to a separate destination. Now, there's a ton of different destinations, and we're going to take a look at those now. And I have a few videos that I'll mention along the way that will show you how to do them in specific. But I'm just going to try to keep this as a general video that will allow you to follow along and hopefully modify it based on your circumstances. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a backup task. And to do that, you can launch Hyper Backup, then you can select the plus symbol, and then you can select Data Backup Task. And this is going to be where we're going to create our backup task. Now, the first thing that you're going to be greeted with is all the different destinations that you can actually back up to. Now, there's not going to be a specific item here that, you know, everybody's going to use. It's going to be different. Um, in general, a lot of people are going to be interested in backing up to an external hard drive. And for that, you can use local folder and USB. However, you can easily back up to Google Drive or Dropbox or my favorite Backblaze B2, which is what I've personally been using for a while now. I have a full video that will show you exactly how to set up Backblaze B2 because it is a little different and I'll leave a pop up for that now. But the key here is that you can back up to a destination of your choice. Now, I want to point out these single versions here. Truthfully, I'd probably advise against using these. It's the local folder and USB single version and the rsync copy single version. In essence, this just creates a hyper backup archive and it stores the files individually. If you're going to go through the length of setting this up, you should probably just use the traditional rsync or local folder and USB to ensure that you're going to have some versioning. So in this example, I'm going to select local folder and USB, and I'm just going to back this up to a separate folder on this NAS. Now, you probably don't want to do this. If you're going to go through the lengths of doing this, you want to ensure that you're backing it up to a separate device. It doesn't necessarily have to be a separate Synology NAS, but it can be if you're interested in doing that. But you can use an external hard drive. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is if this is very important data to you, you have to make sure that you're at least backing it up off-site. So you have to look at this like you might not have to back up your entire NAS offsite, but you do want to back up the data that is very important to you. So in a worst case event, if there was a fire at your house or something and the hard drive goes with the NAS, the external hard drive is probably going to go with it as well. In that case, from a disaster recovery standpoint, you need to be able to restore from a separate location. So we don't want to think that way, but in this case, you actually do have to think that way. Now, after you select your option, the first thing that's going to come up is the way that you have to authenticate with this service. So if you're using Google Drive, you're going to have to authenticate with Google Drive. If you're using rsync, you're going to have to enter in the rsync parameters. So I can't go through every single one of these options here. You just have to know that at this step, it's going to ask you to enter in that information. So just keep in mind that that is the destination server settings. So if it's if you're using rsync, you want to enter in the destination rsync information. I'm just using a local folder, so I'm just going to select a testing folder here. But if you're using an external USB drive, you want to make sure that you select it here. At the bottom here, you're going to see directory, and this is just the name of the archive that will be created when you run this hyper backup task. Now, from this point forward, everything will be standard across the board, meaning that no matter what destination you select, everything from this point forward will be the same. So at this point, you have to go through and you have to select all the folders that you want to back up. So like I said earlier, this doesn't have to be everything. You can go through and back up your entire NAS if you'd like. And if you're using a cloud storage location, you have to be aware that the backup time will probably be long and the costs might be higher than you're expecting, but you can go through and back up your entire NAS. However, like I said, you can only back up the very important information if you'd like. So in this example, I'm not going to be backing up my backups folder because these are backups from a different location. However, I will go through and back up my photos as those are very important to me. The other thing that you can be aware of here is at the bottom, you're going to see this create file filters button. You can go through and you can create file filters here. If you want to include or exclude certain file types, you can do that. If you don't, if you just want to make sure you back up everything, you can totally ignore this piece. 
So the next stage is gonna ask you to back up your applications. Now, not all of your Synology applications will be in this list, but you're gonna be able to go through and back up certain applications and their settings here. So for example, Hyper Backup is the one that we're using here. I'll go through with this task and I'll back up that application. And if for whatever reason something was to happen to Hyper Backup, I could always go back to this archive that's created and I can restore those application settings. Now looking at the backup settings, you can go through and give your task a name, but there's a few things that I want you to be aware of here. The first is the backup schedule. So you can go through and select when you want this backup task to run. And the next one is the integrity check. And you wanna make sure that you run this and running it weekly is probably a good idea. But this just checks the archive periodically to ensure that you can restore. And we'll get to restoring in a minute here, but this is something that you should definitely run. The next thing that you could take a look at is client-side encryption. So client-side encryption will allow you to set a password, and without that password, you will not be able to open that hyper backup archive. So if you're backing up to a cloud destination, for example, you can enable client-side encryption, you can set a password, and then if you have to restore that archive, you can either enter the password or you can use the encryption key. The key thing that you have to understand here is that if for whatever reason you lose that password or encryption key that's generated when you use this, you will not be able to restore this archive. So you have to make sure that if you're using it, you have that password or you're storing it in a safe location to ensure that you're actually gonna be able to decrypt this if you need it. So those are what I think are the most important settings here. You can look at the other ones, but those three are really what you're gonna to wanna to take a look at. And finally, we're gonna take a look at the retention settings. So when you enable backup rotation, you're in essence saying that when you access this archive, you wanna be able to restore versions from a certain period of time. So for example, using this from the earliest versions, if you set this max number of kept versions as 30, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through and it will say that it will keep 30 total versions. So if this runs daily, you'll have 30 versions that you can go back to, which will mean that you'll have 30 days worth of versions that you can cycle through. So if for whatever reason you had a Microsoft Word file, for example, and you went through and you were editing that on a daily basis, you'll know that you can go back 30 days and restore that file. If it changes, you'll be able to go back 30 versions and you can restore any one of those versions. Now that's from the earliest versions and that's probably the easiest way that you could set this up. Now the Smart Recycle is a little different and what it does is it keeps a certain number of hourly versions for the past 24 hours. It will keep a daily version for the past month and then it will keep weekly versions for anything older than one month. So what you have to keep in mind is this is gonna keep a lot of data. So if you have a folder that's constantly changing, you might wanna set this up and leave it this way, but you also have to be aware that if there's a file that was deleted today, for example, that file will be stored in this hyper backup archive for as long as the retention policy holds it. So that means that the hyper backup archive might be a little larger than if you were to use something like from the earliest versions, because at that point, you're just saying that I'm keeping 30 total versions, and then you'll know that 30 versions from today, that file will be gone. So the other thing that you could take a look at is customized retention, and this is just gonna allow you to set your own customized retention. It's more powerful than from the earliest versions because you can set it in specific, and it's a little more customizable than Smart Recycle because it will allow you to keep more than the you know, X number of versions, but it'll allow you to specify exactly what you wanna keep rather than using Smart Recycle, which is what Synology wants you to keep. Now, after you select Done, that task will be created and it will ask you if you want to back up now and you can select Yes. So the one thing that I wanna stress here is that if you have a backup, it's great to know that you're backing up your files, but if you don't test the restoration of those files, you can't be confident that the backup is actually working. So there's two ways that you can restore files in Hyper Backup. The first way is restoring individual files, and the second way is by restoring in bulk. So if you have an entire folder and you wanna restore that entire folder, you can easily do that. The first thing that we're gonna take a look at is restoring an individual file. Now to do that, you're gonna see next to the Backup Now button, you're gonna see a Backup Explorer button. 
And when you select that, it's going to launch the Backup Explorer. And this will be reading that Hyper Backup Archive, and it's going to allow you to navigate through all of the files and folders that exist in that backup. Now at the bottom, you're going to see all of the versions that exist. So you'll see that you can go through your versions and the folders and files that exist will be from that specific version, that point in time. So you'll be able to restore the file. So if you change a file today and, you know, seven days from now, you realize that you needed to go back to the version from, you know, 10 days ago at that point, you can select 10 days ago in this version history and you'll be able to restore that file. Now to do that, you can select the folder of the file and you can select restore. You can right click it, you can download it, or you can copy it to a folder location on the Synology NAS. Any of these options is possible, but the key that you have to be aware of here is that you really want to use this only for individual subfolders and files, because if you want to restore a top level folder, it's very easy to do it using the second method. So taking a look at that, at the main Hyper Backup page, you're gonna see the Restore button and then you can select Data. And this will go through and it's gonna have a restoration task for every one of the Hyper Backup tasks that you have set up. So you can go through and select that task if it exists here. However, if for whatever reason you're restoring from an existing repository that does not exist in this list, you can select that Restore from Existing Repositories button, and it's gonna bring up the Hyper Backup settings there, and you can go through and select whatever your backup destination was so that you can restore from that individual location. So after you access that backup task, the first thing that you're gonna see is you can restore the system configuration. So whenever you use Hyper Backup, it will automatically back up your system configuration. If you want to restore that, you can do that here. But if you don't, you can move on to the next step, and this is going to be where you can restore the folders. Now, keep in mind that you're only restoring folders here, and you can restore subfolders, but if you're looking for an individual file inside any of those folders, you need to use the first option, which was using the Backup Explorer. So at this point, if you select a top-level folder, you're going to see this little red exclamation point here. And the red exclamation point is just letting you know that that folder exists on this Synology NAS already. So if you were to go through and restore it, it will overwrite any of the contents that exist in that folder. So make sure if you're selecting this option that you're actually interested in restoring that folder. The other thing that you can be aware of is you'll see all of your version history at the bottom. So similar to how it works with the Backup Explorer, you can go through and you can select that individual version. Now, finally, the last thing that you're going to see is the applications that you can restore. So if you backed up any of your applications and you want to restore any of the settings, at this section, you can go through and you can select those applications and you'll restore those settings. Now, finally, you're going to get to a data restoration summary and you're going to see exactly what's going to be restored here when you select done. So when you select done, it's going to go through and restore your system configuration if you set that up any folders that you selected, or any applications that you selected, or all three of them if you selected everything. So just keep in mind that if you need to access any application settings or system configurations for this backup, you have to use this option. You can't use the Backup Explorer. But if you're looking for an individual file or folder, you can go through and you can use the Backup Explorer. So at this point, if the file's restored properly, and keep in mind that you might have to space these out as the backup is probably going to take some time. So you need to make sure that the backup's done before you test out the restoring. But if you go through and you can restore a file, you can be confident that you have a backup. Now, whether the backup is following best practices, meaning a 3 2, one backup strategy with three copies of the data on at least two separate mediums with one off-site, That's a different discussion, but what you'll know here is that you have a hyper backup task set up that is backing up the data from your NAS to a destination location and you can restore that information. You probably periodically want to do this, but you know, you don't have to do it very often, maybe once a quarter. Um, I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. This was meant to be a general explanation of it, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.